church family, welcome to Christ Fellowship, welcome home. We are glad that you are here today. 10 o'clock, we've been waiting for you. Even though the rain is outside, we are ready to worship today. We've been praying for you, for this service, that we would experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, maybe like never before today. So you guys ready to lift your voice, to lift your worship in this house of the Lord? Come on. the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory.
faithful God. 
God, a present God, God with us, God near, God close. Thank you for who you are. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, I hand provide. And 
to fight my battles alone that our God is with us amen see we don't just serve a God who watches over us but we serve a God who walks with us there is another in the fire there's another in the water it reminds me of David's cry in Psalm 23 that David says even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil why because you are with me later on yeah, come on. He's with you today. You need to know it. You need to get in your spirit today. You need to get in your heart today. Later on, David would cry out in Psalm 34 that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. See, God is not distant or unaware, but he is up close. He is personal and he is beside you today, 10 a.m., whatever you're walking through. Just as God was with the nation of Israel and the Red Sea, God is with you. And just as God was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace, God is with you. And you need to get this in your heart today. Why? Because it's the lie of the enemy today that would tell you that you are alone, that there is no one who can identify with you, that there's no one who can have empathy or sympathy towards you. Can I tell you today that God is aware, He is with, and He knows you are not alone today. So let's get it in our spirit. Let's get it in our heart today that you are not alone. Come on, let's sing it. Let's declare it 10 a.m. from the front to the back. You're not to be alone. Come on. Between the 
and pray today, God, we are so grateful that you battle with us, that you are beside us. I pray for anyone that's in this room today that's walking through something in life that has them feeling captive or held back or defeated, that they would sense that you are with them to free them and to give them faith today, whatever it is. Your faithfulness in the past is a reminder for us today that you are with us. <laughs> and greater, greater are you who is with us than whoever could be against us. We love you today, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Aren't you grateful to be in the house of God today, 10 a.m.? Amen. Well, hey, just before you're seated, say hello to somebody who you haven't seen since last week, all right? Say, hey, hey, good to see you. Come on, tell them. Good to see you. Good to see you. Troy, good to see you. Hey, Victor, how you doing? Well, it's good to see you on this Sunday morning. If we haven't met before, my name is Dave Samil. My wife, Rhonda, and I, we get the joy and privilege of serving as the campus pastors here at our Palm Beach Gardens location, Christ Fellowship, one church from down in Boca all the way up to Vero today in the heart of our city, out to Okeechobee as well. But what we're passionate about is helping people getting connected to the house of God today. We say that this is the house of God. We believe the church is not a building that you walk into, but truly a family you can belong to. One of the ways that we make that easy for you is uh, there's a connect card that looks like this in the seat pocket in front of you. We'd love for you to take a moment to fill this connect card out. And then after service today, bring it over to the connector, which is that glass hallway that connects this building to our life center, which by the way, after service today, the life center is hopping. We've got some activities for the kids, some sports things going on and some chips and salsa as well, because it's game day weekend at Christ Fellowship. So there's nothing like chips and salsa at 10 a.m. in the morning, all right? Come on, glory and Valentine's Day tomorrow. And so you get, you know, onion breath and a kiss from your bride at church is going to be good. So you can uh, head over there with that connect card. Our team's there. We'd love to meet you. Why? Because we actually believe that there's more to church than Sunday. In fact, if you're only seeing church people once a week, you're missing out. And so we've got groups and classes that are meeting throughout the week. And we'd love to connect you to some of the resources and opportunities here at the church. This card's a great way to do that. If you need to run, you can text the word CONNECT to 441-441 and start a digital conversation that way. Which, by the way, if you're not following us on social media or befriending us on Facebook, you need to because there's so much happening at the church, you don't want to miss anything. Like, did you know this week we launched a brand new movement of music at Christ Fellowship called Movement Music. And so this is a new sound for a new generation, which some of you, this is not the music you listen to, it's the music your grandkids listen to, and they need to listen to this versus the other stuff that they're listening to, but they just released a brand new single called Closer. This is coming from the heart of our worship team and student ministries and young adults. It's such an awesome, awesome thing. You can download it wherever you get your music, Apple Music or Spotify, wherever you find music, search Christ Fellowship or Movement Music, you're gonna be able to find it right there. Speaking of not missing out on things, too. Did you know that Joyce Meyer is going to be with us next Sunday, or not next Sunday, two weeks from now, two weeks from now, Sunday night, February 27th at 5 p.m. You do not want to miss it. Would you help me welcome our senior pastors, pastors Todd and Julie, as they lead us in our time hey. of giving today. I'm excited you, for man? Joyce. I'm excited too. How are we doing, church? Yeah. It's good to have you here. So glad you're here. Hey, if we haven't met you yet, because we know there's a lot of new people in the house today for game day, we're Todd and Julie, and we're the pastors here at Christ Fellowship, and we are so glad that you're here. There's a verse that says, um, I was glad when they said to me, let's go in the house of the Lord. And 10 a.m., you like showed up ready to worship, and we're so glad that you're here today. Yeah, it's good to see some people I haven't seen for a while, Doug and Connie, and then meet some new friends from New Jersey, and uh, all together here just focusing on Jesus. So glad you're here. I want to let you know a couple things. One is is that in honor of Black History Month, uh, Pastor Jimmy Rollins and I are gonna be hosting an online conversation next Monday night, uh, February 21st, uh, together. And we're, you have to understand your history to be able to forge a new destiny. And so we're gonna be talking a little bit about that together and invite you to join in. You can get more information by just staying in tune with our social media accounts and we'll get you linked up with that as we head into that week. Yeah, I can't wait for that. And you know, at church, we just wanted to take a minute just to celebrate something really special that happened here this last right. week. You may not even know it, but this last week we hosted our Christ Fellowship Church Conference. Yeah. And this is where thousands of church leaders came from literally all over the country and all over the world to be invested in. And it was amazing. It really was. We had uh, leaders from uh, Africa, 
and Europe and uh, even Israel that flew in just for this conference, as well as churches down the street that came together. And so we're working together to really equip the body of Christ. Yeah, and our prayer going into it is that this will be a time of refueling and refreshing church leaders um, that really, they're not quite as open as we are in Florida, so they've had a rough go these yeah. last couple of years. And, and also just that we didn't want them just to hear our words, but we really wanted to create a space where they could hear God's voice. And for the one that might just be ready to give up or quit, yeah. that there would just be something spoken over them that, that would help them to know they can move forward with strength and courage. And it was amazing it really to was. hear the reports that we got from these pastors. And you so guys. you guys were actually responsible for throwing a church conference for thousands of church leaders to be encouraged. Well done. You did a great yeah. job. And the yeah. reason I say that is because when you financially give and are a part of everything we're doing at Christ Fellowship, you're not only investing in raising up the next generation to love God and follow God, and you're not only a part of all the people we are caring for that are hungry and hurting right here in Palm Beach County and around the world, but you're also investing in church leaders and pastors, and you're helping them be more effective with the ministry that they're a part of. So thank you for that. Yeah, it's all a part of increasing and expanding the influence of the body of Christ in our world today. And there's this scripture in Proverbs 11:25 that it says that a generous person will prosper that the one that refreshes other people, you're gonna also be refreshed. So this week, there were hundreds of church leaders that were refreshed because of your giving. So thank you for that. And our prayer is that as we give today, you will be encouraged and refreshed. Yeah, and there's several ways you can do that. Uh, you can use the, the envelope and the seat back in front of you to participate today and drop that off in one of the giving boxes when you leave. Or you can do what Julie and I do, uh, go online. You can text the word GIVE to 441441 and be a part that way. However you choose to participate, just know that we're praying that the name of Jesus be lifted high in this region and around the world through every dollar given. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you. We recognize that every good thing in our life comes from you anyway. So anything we're giving back to you, it's from you. And so we just pray you take the gifts and the offerings that we're giving today and that you would use them to just make your love and your message famous to the people around the world and right here in Palm Beach County. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen, amen. Okay, a little poll before Coach Mullins comes to the stage. It's game day, right? So I need to know, do I have any LA Ram fans in the house today? Let me hear. Wow, three, <laughs> three people. That's awesome. Sorry, buddy. Uh, any Cincinnati Bengal fans in the house today? And who's in it for the chicken wings and the commercials? Okay, yeah, all right. Give it up for my dad, Coach Mullins. Come on, dad. Hey, guys. Well, you know, growing up just north of Cincy, you know who I'm for. I'm for the Bengals, and, and I've been to the Bengals training camp, and the Bengals used to come and train at our college down in Georgetown, Kentucky, uh, where I coach. So I'm, I'm big in the Bengals, and, and, I, and I love Joe Burrow, and, and so anyways, I'm, I'm rooting for the Bengals today. Hey, we have a special treat today. It's something different we've never done before on Super Bowl weekend. I had a chance to interview a two-time Super Bowl champion, he won, this is very unique, he won both as a player, the Super Bowl ring for Green Bay, and he won the ring as the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in 2018, Coach Doug Peterson. And we explore some of those principles that he lives by that helped him to achieve that kind of a victory. And these are the principles that we can apply to take back our lives that God ordained for us a life of a true champion. So I think you're gonna love this interview. I watched it at 8.30 and I loved it, even though I'm the one interviewing Coach Peterson. So join me on this interview right now. God bless. I wanna welcome everyone joining us today on this Super Bowl weekend. It's the clash of the Titans. You got the AFC champions, get the NFC champions, and it's gonna be a phenomenal game today. I wanna to welcome everyone joining us at all of our campuses, all of you joining us online. And a special shout out to the men and women that are serving in the armed forces around the world. We love you. Today, to help us analyze how we can all experience the victory that God has ordained for us, and we take some of the principles that are even used when we coach this great game today, 
I brought in a specialist, a special counselor here is gonna help me kind of coach us up today because he coached Philadelphia to their first and only Super Bowl victory in 2018. And he also, as a player in 1997, was a member of the Green Bay Packers when they won the Super Bowl. So we got a two-time Super Bowl champion with us today. Give a warm Christ Fellowship welcome to Coach Doug Peterson. Come on, Coach, come in on here, baby. Wow, thank you, Coach. I'm so glad I caught this football because my hands are kind of my hands are kind of way down just a little bit. Well, well, wait, what you got on here? You got you got your rings. I oh, got, got those rings. rings. Okay, what, which one? This is Green Bay. Yeah, I see Green that Bay one right there. You, you yep. won that as a player. Won that as a player back in 1997. Wow, wow. Then this is the uh, Eagles. This is uh, Super Bowl 52. Just wow. Years look ago. at this. I'm gonna get a little close up of this, guys. Look at look at these rings. You know, I really like these. Hey, would you mind uh, during the interview time at least a little bit? I could feel like a champion to wear one of these. Certainly, puppies. I'd love for you to wear okay, that. Okay, man, that one fits really nice, yeah. coach. Okay. That fits really good. Okay. okay, coach. Let's grab a seat. We're gonna we're gonna analyze what it takes to be prepared to achieve victory in such a momentous game like this, but even the greater game, the game of life. Okay, Sounds great. let's I'm go. Ready. Come on, gang. My whole team with it. Big Peterson has his first touchdown pass. You won't forget it. We came to handle business. Christ Fellowship family, I want you to know that Coach Peterson is really a very special guy. We've become friends. Uh, he and his wife, Jeannie, attend our uh, Jupiter campus and your family in Jupiter. We've been off on some adventures together, so it's been really great. So I, I really love your heart, and really you're, you're a very humble guy for a guy that's achieved uh, the status you've achieved as a winning coach. You know, one thing that we've always known as coaches, uh, I've never coached on your level, but uh, coaching a little bit on, on college level, uh, preparation has always kind of been the key to victory. And, and really, church family, that's what we want to really kind of dig down on today is that God has ordained for every one of us to experience victory in our lives. That's what Jesus came to deliver to us when he says in John 10, 10, I've come that you can have life and experience it in a victorious way. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to 2018. Here you are. Um, as a head coach, taking Philly to their to the Super Bowl game, and you're getting ready to face that. And then I, I we see this this iconic picture after you won the game. I love this iconic picture we have of you right here, where you're holding the Lombardi Trophy up. But I also know, in talking with you, that in order to achieve that great victory, you had to overcome a lot of adversity. You had a lot of adversity that year with the team. Uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know that that season we um, we were ten and two, and we're going out to play the the, the Los Angeles Rams you know, in the, in the Coliseum out there. But prior to that, we had lost several of our players. We'd lost a, a starting left tackle. We'd lost a starting safety and also, or not a starting safety, but a starting special teams player. Our middle linebacker went down, a starting running back. And then we go out to play the LA Rams and we lose our starting quarterback. But I remember you told me something that you went into the locker room with your team uh, as you're getting ready to face now to get into playoffs, to try to get to the big game that we're celebrating today. And there was something you said to them I thought was pretty significant about uh, the, the individual can do something, but a team can do something even greater. What was that phrase? Yeah, so it, it, was, it was very unique. I, in fact, it was, it was two days after that game where I was having a team meeting on Tuesday and had the team back together after, after that win in L.A. And, and uh, you know, I, I was searching for the words, the, the right words to say to the team because the team was excited, but the team was also, it's kind of like the air was let out of the sails just a little bit. And I have a I have a picture framed. My wife and I went to a concert in Green Bay when I was a player with Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. And uh, we have a picture, uh, you know, of them with us. And on the back of the wall that we were taking this picture, it says one man can make uh, or an individual can make a difference. A team can make the miracle. And so for me, it was like that was it. And my son actually took a picture of it and sent it. He texted it to me wow. while I was sitting in my office. And I go, you know what? That's exactly the message that I need to tell my football team is that one man can make a difference. But it's going to be this team sitting in this room right now today that's going to make the miracle. And, and they really embraced that. And so now that was one phrase that has really stuck with me the entire time. That's great. Because, you know, obviously God created us for team. You know, that's, that's the power of the church. Uh, that's the power of our groups. Uh, that's the power of all God wants us to do. We are simply 
stronger, better together. And, and, and that's the dynamic of what a team can do. I think that's what, when the Bible talks about this, it's one scripture. It's always been a, a kind of a, a unique scripture in my mind where it says one could put a thousand in flight, two can put 10,000 in flight. Mm, that math doesn't quite compulate, but I think it's that same principle that together, especially in God's family, God can do miracles with that. And so some of you are maybe need to hear that word today, that when you team up with God's team, there are miracles that are possible to take place in your life. Coach, uh, before we jump into uh, what has kind of been some of your mantra and your guiding core values of your life, I just wanna ask you real quick as getting going here in our discussion today, how has your, the role of your personal faith in Jesus Christ uh, played in, in helping you overcome some of these adversities that you were facing. T- talk to us just a little bit about that. You know, that, that, that's everything to me. That, that's, how, that's how I get through every single day. That's how I led our football team, and, and that's how I lead my life. And it started with my quiet time in the morning. And, you know, and, and, and I had lost my brother this past year and, um, to, to cancer and, mm-hmm. you know, in October in 2021. And, and you know, if it wasn't for my faith and being grounded and having Jesus Christ right beside me, holding me up, taking me by the hand, kind of, kind of that analogy of a, of, a, of a football player being knocked down and, and your teammates there to right. pick you right back up and dust you off. And, you know, and that's what he did. And that's what he did for us that season, you know, to be able to come, overcome some of the adversity that, that we faced, you know, through injury and, and through all the negativity that surrounded us towards the end of the season, that, that we just weren't good enough as a football team. And then Having to go through this with my with my brother uh, this past year, uh, I think God really really showed me how to to really be patient and how to rely on Him. And and you know there, there's a there's an analogy, and I and I actually heard this a couple of months ago about a, about an anchor and a chain, and and you know God being the anchor. And if we're not continually checking the links of our chain, you know, uh, and those things break, then then we're never going to stay connected with Christ. And so. For me, that, that meant everything. And that was kind of the analogy that I needed in my life uh, to stay grounded and stay, you know, with the one true anchor of Jesus Christ. And he, he brought me through all these tough, tough That's situations, uh, you know, over, over the year. Yeah, you know, the Word of God says that our hope in Christ is an anchor for our soul. That's right. You know, so I think that's what really is, is the difference, and we can find that anchor. Well, Coach, I, I heard you speak at a, um, a men's breakfast that we held up in Jupiter and uh, you got up and you shared these four uh, kind of core principles that you try to live by and try to coach by. And I can see where you use those to help you overcome adversity as well. And so I, we're, we want to jump into those, but would you share with us those, those, those four things real quick? Yeah, these, these, are, these are not only things that we, we use on, on sports teams and how to, how to kind of get our teams motivated, but we also can use these in life. And the, and the first one is create energy every day creating energy. The second one is eliminate distractions. The third one is, is fear nothing. And then the fourth one is attack everything. And, and those are great principles to obviously oh, to it. live by and obviously to coach by. So let's break this down, Coach. We, all, we like to break things down. That's you know, right. we're always breaking the film down. We're analyzing the game, analyzing this, everything. But I want to break these four thoughts down that you just gave us. First one is create energy. And obviously, uh, if you're going to create energy and bring energy to wherever you go and bring a, a positive sense of confidence in, in whatever you do, you've got to be, stay energized yourself. That's right. So how did you keep yourself energized so you could be a source of energy for your team? Well, you know, the first thing is obviously my quiet time. That, that's, that's my source of strength. That's my source of, source of energy, you know, every single day, being able to spend 15, 20, 30 minutes every morning, as soon as I got into the office, spending time in the Word and, and praying and, and meditating on the Word so, so God could really lay out what the day is going to look like. And, and then, you know, for me, too, it's, it's culture building, too, right? It's, it's, it's creating an environment where people enjoy coming to work and, and, and really... The players have a great, safe environment. They love coming in. They love the, the you know, for me, it's the, the coaches and the men and the women that, that, I, that I work with every single day that, that we have this environment that is exciting to, to come to. And that, that, that right there also creates a great energy within your, you know, your soul just a little bit. But I think if, there's, if, if my quiet time is, is number one, I think the 1A or the 1B of this is, is I think, your physical your, your health. I, I think of just staying, staying in shape and being physically fit and trying to, trying to keep your mind and body 
healthy right. and fresh. That, that's so important because if, if, if I get wore down, that's right. I'm the energy giver. I don't want to be the energy stealer, right? right or the taker. Right. So right. having that physical presence and, and, and obviously, you know, working out, great mind, great body, um, really leads to having great energy every single day. That's so true. And you know what, gang, that's true spiritually too for us speaking, because when you think about it, we've got to spiritually stay and get in shape if we're going to have the energy, the light of Christ shining through us. You know, light is, of course, is energy. And Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And so let your light shine that men will see your good works and bring glory to your Father above. Or in the coach's translation, live such a life that's so bright and so attractive that people are drawn to you so you can lead them to Jesus. That's what Jesus was really saying there. And so the fundamentals are true. Coach, when I was uh, coaching at Georgetown College, the small division two school, uh, I took our team up to Ohio State to do in their spring practice to hang out with them and learn from them for three days. When we came away from all that, I sat with the coach staff and said, okay guys, let's analyze what we've learned, you know, three days at Ohio State and two days with the Bengals camp. And here was the one glaring thing that jumped out at me. They were teaching the exact same fundamental techniques that we were teaching. Their players were bigger, stronger, and faster, and more consistent in the execution of it, but the fundamentals were the same. And I think sometimes, you know, we all know, we keep stressing, let's get back to the fundamentals, you know, and execute those fundamentals well. And, and in the spiritual exercise, you know, every day we've got to lift the Word of God. I mean, you've got to lift to get strong. I remember when I was in college, I, uh, I had my, my training partner was a guy named Bob Sarver, and he was a fullback. And Bob was, uh, he, he was a weight junkie. He loved the weight room, you know. I was kind of farm boy strong. I, I grew up on a farm in Ohio, and I was just kind of strong from doing all the work you do on the farm. I hadn't really lifted weights until I got to college. And then I'm sitting with him, so Bob, he's pumping it, you know, pumping his weight. And I get in and I'm going, I'm pumping it, but I go, oh my gosh. So then he started getting on me and training with me and pushing me. And I started pumping more than I ever thought could. And that made me stronger, which ended up making me more confident even as a player. But we've got to do that with the word of God every day. We, we used to call them skull sessions where we get in and we're going to be coached up, train, uh, analyze our plays, our, our assignments, everything. To me, that's your prayer time, man. You gotta get before the Lord and, 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 and get in his presence and let the spirit of God do his work. And then, you know, you have the team workouts. You gotta have the team practice, that gets you in shape. And to me, that's, that's our worship services. That's when we come together as the team, we're worshiping, we're honoring God. Think about it. If, if we will make these a priority in our lives, they will help us reflect the energy and the life that God wants us to have so we can shine bright for the kingdom of God and go out there. Because I think it's, it should be our goal every day, Coach, to bring light in the dark places of life. Exactly. And bring encouragement, uh, bring hope, bring optimism. You had to walk in that room, you've lost all these players, and, and you told me, you said, hey guys, you know, like you said, you know, we've lost some great individuals and an individual can make a difference, but a team can bring a miracle. So here's, here's my first takeaway, church, after this create energy thing. Here, here's what I got for you. Here's my coaching point. Get in shape and shine bright. Get in shape and shine bright, and you can affect the whole mood and atmosphere around you completely. Coach, your second principle is eliminate distractions. So, I mean, obviously that's, We've got to prioritize what's really important. Talk to us real quickly about how you went through that process. Yeah, you know, and you, you just hit a key word there, prioritize. And, and for us, you know, uh, at, at what we do, it could be, it could be the media, uh, it could be uh, relationships, it could be your fans, it could be, it could be family pulling on you, you know, for tickets and hotels and different things. And they're, they're grabbing at your time and, and all this kind of stuff. And those are all distractions that take you away. You know, maybe not getting enough rest at night, getting enough sleep, eating right. All the stuff that comes with staying healthy, as we talked about earlier, about right. preparing your bodies. Right. It's exactly what, what I talk about when we talk about eliminating these distractions and how to prioritize just a little bit, as you said, so that, so that we can be at our best when we take the field on game day. Exactly. You know, I, I think that's a challenge for all of us because one thing I've noticed about champions, coach, champions are very focused individuals. They are able to focus in, eliminate the distractions that they need to eliminate and focus in. You know, we've just come out of a great series 
uh, that Pastor Todd has led us through in, in listen, how to eliminate the distractions so that we can really hear the voice of God and focus on the right things. And you know, uh, in life, and especially in coaching, my goodness gracious, you've got so many distractions from without and from within. Because I know when I coached and I lost a game, I was my worst enemy. I mean, I, I, I was hard on myself losing. And it's tough when you lose, coach, and the loss is posted on a scoreboard and on the newspaper and on ESPN every week, you know, and they're all critiquing everything about you. So you have to somehow put that aside and, and you have to be very secure in who you are as an individual and your game plan and your intent. And, and, and I, I think that's true also in our spiritual lives. And, and I want to speak to that for just a moment. I, I think one of the biggest battles we have to win is this battle of self-doubt and hesitation about who we really are in Christ. But when I have found when I am secure in who I am in Christ, then that gives me the stability I need to focus on what's really important. Jesus said this, seek first the kingdom of God and all the other things you have need of will be brought into your life. So in other words, what's important to God needs to become important to us. And we need to focus on the bigger things, the bigger missions. Now, when I was a football coach, I wanted to coach, I wanted to win, I wanted to put my players in a position to win, I wanted to do my very best. But I knew there was always a higher calling in my life beyond just helping them win football games. It was helping them to understand that they are called of God and that they have a mission to serve him and honor him with their lives. And, and I've always felt they could do it better from a winning position than a losing position. Hello. So Hello, yeah. I want them to, to win in that. But it, it, does, it does matter. And, and I think that's important that we're strong. You had to be secure in who you were as a man, as a coach, in your training, in your preparation. Didn't you, didn't you have to feel that? You have to feel that. And part of, part of my job as a head coach, and obviously this is where it goes back to, again, my quiet time and spending time you know, uh, with, with, with Christ in the morning too, right. the devil's going to tell you that you're not good enough. The devil's going to tell you that, that you're not going to be able to win this game, or the devil is going to tell you that you're exactly. not going to be able to overcome all these distractions. And that's, that's just the, as we call it, that stinking thinking, you know, sort right. of thing right. that creeps into our, right. into our mind. So those are the things we have to try to right. eliminate. And we talk about eliminating right. the noise and that, that helps you, yeah. you know, in your daily walk. Well, the great coach of the new Testament is the apostle Paul. And the, uh, Coach Paul, so Coach Paul, not called Paul Bear Bryant, but Coach Paul, the apostle. He said, you know, in Philippians uh, chapter four, verse eight, he says, think on the things that are of good report. You know, think on those things that are pure, lovely, honest, you know. And, and Paul knew that you have to take captive the thoughts of your mind and make them subject to Christ, he says in, in Corinthians. But that whole battleground of, of our thinking is so critical. That's why I love what, what Coach Paul says to the Ephesians. He says, listen, guys, discover who you are in Christ, Ephesians 1.11. He says, discover who you are in Christ. That's where you find your identity, and that's where you find your purpose. And when you are secure in who you are, then, man, that helps you to stay focused on what's really important. So, and, and, and I want to add one more thing. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, Jude says, as he's addressing the saints, he says, to the called and loved by the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. And that stuck with me. We are called of God, loved by God, and we are kept by Christ. So we can be secure in who we are in Christ, coach. And church, you can be secure in who you are in Christ. And when you stand in that security, then you have a sense of identity and you have a sense of focus. So here's my coaching tip coming off this point is simply this. Keep your spiritual identity and mission in focus at all times. It's a key to being prepared for victory. Okay, coach, let's jump into this third one, which is fear nothing. Hello, we're in a culture today. And my guys, it seems like there's been a spirit of fear and anxiety with all the uncertainty and the pandemic and, 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 and you know the COVID and all the stuff going on. But in, in your philosophy, when it came to the games and what you had to face, that fear nothing factor had to be pretty intimidating at times, how to struggle against that fear. It, it, it's, it's a real thing. It's a real emotion. And it's something that really can creep into your thinking a, a little bit. And so for us as coaches, too, it all comes down to preparation, right? It all comes down. If you want to eliminate fear, 
It comes down from how you prepare during the week and how you study and how you get your team, how you go out there and practice, right? You know, on Wednesday, right, Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday, and get ready right. for that game on Sunday. And, and that to me is your preparation eliminates all fear. And just like spending time with Christ, it eliminates a lot of your distractions. It creates that energy. And then for me as the head coach, it eliminates fear. So you can go into the game being confident, wow. being strong, and, and you can, you know. You so can- coach, uh, how many hours a week Oh, Did wow. you spend in preparation for a game, not just Super Bowl game, but for a typical game each week? How many hours do you prepare? I mean, we're, we're, we're on average about 17 hours a day, and we're upwards to, you know, 85 to maybe 90 hours, depending on, you know, Hello. depending on the week and, and depending on your opponent. And, you know, it takes a lot of time. And, and some, some people think we just kind of show up and roll a ball out there and, and go practice and play. But there's a lot of preparation, a lot of wow. preparation in, in the wow. game plan, you know, for each, uh, for each week. Well, here's, here's that principle real key here, church family. Preparation produces confidence, and confidence produces courage. And when you are thoroughly prepared, that's why we said preparation is the key to victory. Right. And, and when we're preparing our lives in our time of preparation, spiritual preparation for the Lord, getting back those fundamentals, how much time am I spending in the Word? How much time am I spending in prayer? How much time am I spending huddled up with other strong believers of the faith that are there to encourage and help us? Coach, when, when you were coaching and, and in your in playing career, uh, who did you have around you that you could go to that could help strengthen you and keep you strong and, and fearless? You know, that's, that's, uh, that's a great question because sometimes when you're at the top, when you're the head coach, you're kind of in a you're kind of in an isolated bubble, and you're kind of away mm-hmm. from you know away from the the team just a little bit. But I, I wanted to surround myself with number one great men, great teachers, you know guys that just they they, they love to the game of football. But right. for me, there's a, there's a couple of gentlemen, and one Frank Reich. He's he's now the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, and he was he was the mentor to me. He was he was a guy that. That, that we could pray together, we could, we could bounce scripture off each other. You know, he'd come in my office when he got there early in the morning and we'd sit down and, and pray for the day. And, and, that, and that really strengthened me. And that, you know, it goes back to creating energy. That helped me create energy for the team that day. And, right. and Frank, was, Frank was a guy that really has been a mentor, you know, that way to me spiritually. Yeah, we all need that in our lives. You know, we're, we're really right now, church family, we're encouraging everybody to get into a group and get into groups because it's so critical. I mean, you're gonna get encouragement, you're, you're gonna get strength, you're gonna build strong relationships. And you know what, when you face adversity, you're gonna have people there to walk through that with you, to pray with you through that time, and to be there to come alongside and strengthen you. And then in turn, you're gonna be there to strengthen them and to help them as well. That's why it's so critical that we have that dynamic. You know, I I preached a sermon a long time ago about the power of the huddle, coach. And a lot of things go on in the huddle. You know, there's, uh, there's, you you get to play, you, you get to snap count, you get all that, but you also get held accountable in the huddle and you get straightened out in the huddle, you get encouraged in the huddle, you know, you know that because you had to lead that huddle. You had to be the leader of the huddle as a quarterback, but we need to huddle up. It's a principle of life that's so critical. And then the word of God reminds us that really God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and that of a sound mind. And you know, and, and the word of God says, remember, greater is he that's within you, it says in 1 John 4, 4, than he that's within the world. And it's kind of like, if, if, if God be for me, what do I have to fear? You know, if, if God is with me, I, I've always made the, my coach's translation of Romans 8, 37, um, if God be for me, who can mess with me? You know, it's like, you know, there we go, who can mess with me? And remember what Paul says, and, and, and Coach Paul said this in Philippians, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, make your requests to God. And then it says this, the peace of God, Coach, that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So praise God. With the spirit of God in us, we have nothing to fear. Amen. Okay, let's go to your last point, which is attack everything. I love this one, attack everything. Man, you had an aggressive approach to the game, the Super Bowl game in 2018. Of course, you know, one of the, the, the famous plays was this play right here. And I, I want to play it for us. And uh, I, I want the whole uh, church family to watch this play. Here we go. And with under a minute left, they needed to make a big call. And it's fourth and goal at the one. 
going for it right here. We're going for it right here. You want Philly Philly? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Philly special. Ready? Holes in the gun. Love it. To his right. Here we go. Here we go. Now he lines up behind Foles. Easy, easy. Foles. Yeah, Drew to the right. It goes directly to Clement. Clement reverses it. And the pass goes into the end zone. And it is a touchdown by Nick Foles. One, 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 one. An undrafted rookie running back. Tossing to a third string tight end throwing to a backup quarterback. There isn't a play in the playbook that illustrates what makes this Philly team special. More than the Philly special. Well, people say you got to be daring to beat the Patriots on this stage. And Doug Peterson certainly showing a lot of confidence in his offense. So when Nick came to the sideline, why So when Nick came to the sideline and he asked me, he goes, hey, do you want Philly Philly? We called it Philly Special. You yeah. Know, that was the name of the play. But he, he said Philly Philly. For a split second, I was honestly thinking job security. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, I'm on the biggest stage right. of my career, the first Super Bowl championship in Philadelphia Eagles history. history. And and we're gonna run a trick play on a fourth and goal oh, yeah. at the at the one you know, at the one yard line. But but again, it goes back. We've talked about this already. It goes back to preparation. It goes back to fear nothing. And and we're talking about attacking everything. Right. My mindset going into that Super Bowl is I needed to be on the the attack. I needed to right. attack the New England Patriots, and we needed to score as many points as we could uh, in that football game. Well, and, you're, and you're that playing was it. the goat. You know, you got the greatest of all time there, and Tom Brady and. Coach Belichick, and who's won more Super Bowls than those guys? And here you are on that stage, and you had the courage to call that, but that preparation. And I think a lot of those situational plays, you told me you practiced those back in the summer. You put your team in that position to practice those. So when it came time to execute them, you were ready. We were ready. We, that was something I made my mind up way back in, in January and February in the offseason, yeah. that, that when we got back together in April and May and June, that right. we were going to be focused on these types of situations, yeah. putting our team in, in these situations. Then we did it all season long. We had great success on fourth down that year, uh, two-point conversions that year, and then the players begin to appreciate that, and the players want it. And then it talks about, you know, you talk about ownership with the football team, right. and, and, and then we get into a fourth down situation, and the players are like, let's go, coach. Let's we, go. We, we're, we're prepared for we this. And, and so we were able to do that all the way through to the Super Bowl. Church family, that, that's what's so critical about staying prepared, being prayed up. Don't just wait till a crisis comes and then jump on your knees and pray. Stay, stay read up and strengthened in the word. So when adversity and crisis does come, you're ready for it. You're, you're ready for it and you're ready to act with courage and attack it. You, you know, God did not mean for us to play on defense where we're back on our heels, reacting. And then one other thing I've noticed, coach, when you're on defense, the enemy of our soul on offense is attacking at our point of weakness every time. Because that's what you do in football. Do in football. You attack at a point of weakness from your offense. But when you're on offense, when you're intentional, when you're aggressive, when you're prepared, you can then go from a place of your strength. And you play from your place of strength, not a place of weakness. That's playing on offense. And I think that's why Coach uh, Apostle Paul said... I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. So that's, that's who we are. We, we can live that way. And coach, as we wrap this up today, I, I just want to thank you for being here with us and sharing these principles with us. But it's really what we're really trying to say to our church family today is that when we're in spiritual shape, focused and secure in who we are in Christ, then we can attack life and we can win at life when we do that. You know, God's always been looking for one trait in all human hearts. That is that we would fully love him, that we would be all in. And when we're all in, he says, I love this verse of scripture in 2 Chronicles 16, 9. It says, the eyes of the Lord are ranging throughout all the earth, looking to show himself strong on behalf of that one whose heart is fully committed to him. When you are fully committed to him, God will bring victory in your life. So here we go. Create energy, be that light, eliminate distractions, 
Keep your mind focused on your mission. Fear nothing. Remember, if God's for you, who can be against you? And attack everything. Get on offense. And then you'll be prepared for victory. Praise God. Coach, thank if, you. If you don't want me to attack you right now, can I have my ring back? <clears throat> Please. Well, I was, I'm getting right You're getting with comfortable with that ring. I need that thing well, back I hate now. to give this thing up. <laughs> hey, one more time. Let's give it up for Coach Peterson. Come on. I love it. What you just saw and what we just listened to together today is a modern day moment of what Jesus would do on the hillside as he would take modern day imagery of agriculture and farming and try to bring about new truths. And so you just saw a modern day moment of pastor, coach Tom, trying to bring out some truths with football with coach Doug Peterson. And it's our hope that you would understand today that you can't experience that life without a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus, he didn't come to start some kind of religious movement. No, Jesus came so that a relationship could be restored between God and humanity. And you might be here today and you hear those points about eliminating distractions and attacking life and going through all that and recognizing that in your own heart and life that your relationship with the coach, God the Father, is not where it needs to be. So we wanna give you a moment today with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here and you'd say, Dave, I'm not where I need to be in my relationship with God. I wanna begin or restart a relationship with him. I wanna lead you in a prayer today. Why? Because the apostle Paul says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and rose again, you will be saved. That's the first part of experiencing a life that is truly life. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here today and you say, Dave, I know I need to begin to restart my relationship with Christ. Would you just raise your hand in this room today? I wanna know who I'm praying with. Yes, yeah, just raise it high. Yeah, just raise it high today. You raising your hand is that first act of confession today. We're gonna pray a prayer. Those of you with your hands raised, you can put them down. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. And church family, help me with this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, I know I need you. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins and fill me with your spirit. I want to live for you all the days of my life. I am yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that made that decision today. Absolutely incredible. Two things we would tell you, two things we would tell you, just keep coming back to church and then tell us. You can text the word yes to 441 to 441. We're going to put an ebook in your hand that's going to help you over the next seven days. You might be seeing people around the room today with some chocolate covered footballs. Why? Because two of the greatest holidays in February have combined. It is Super Bowl Sunday and Valentine's Day weekend. Oh my goodness. I feel bad for this fiance. I saw this meme on Instagram when my fiance tells me they moved the Super Bowl to Valentine's Day weekend. Oh my goodness. But uh, Jalen Ramsey has something for you as well. I love this one. You intercepted my heart. I'm hoping that doesn't happen tonight, but I pray this does. Cooper Cup, look at this one. I'll drop everything to be with you. We are hoping that Cooper Cup drops every ball as Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals go on to win. That's our prayer. Hey, would you stand to your feet today as you're getting some of those chocolates and candies? We've got chips and salsa over in the Life Center as well. You don't have to go home. Go over there. Hang Hang out if you need prayer. Our prayer team's coming forward. We love you. Have a great, great Super Bowl weekend. Bye-bye.